Hi, welcome to another lesson in electrochemistry. Electrochemistry, when you take this name and break it up, electro, electricity, having something to do with chemistry or chemical reactions. And you're right. One aspect of electrochemistry is when chemical reactions produce electricity. And the other aspect is when electricity is needed to initiate a chemical reaction. Now, before we get to electrochemistry in its bigger sense, we have to take a couple baby steps to get there. We have to know what kinds of reactions are in this field of electrochemistry, and they are reduction oxidation reactions or redox reactions. We take these two words, reduction and oxidation, and combine them into one word, redox, because we can't have one without the other. They must happen complementary and simultaneously with each other. If you haven't yet written down the definitions, please do so. An oxidation reaction is one where the oxidation number of an element increases. Last lesson, we learned how to assign oxidation numbers. So if we see a number on our number line, moving from zero, let's say, up you know, the scale to something like positive five, that would be an example of an oxidation number increasing. And this happens when atoms lose electrons. Remember that electrons are negatively charged. So if my atom is losing negative charge, it's becoming more positive. Therefore, the element's oxidation number will increase. In a reduction reaction, the oxidation number of an element decreases. In other words, we start, let's say it's something like positive one, and we move our way down to something such as negative two. Our number is decreasing, it's becoming more negative, and that happens when the atom is gaining electrons. Again, electrons are negatively charged particles, so if we're getting more negative particles in our electron cloud, our overall charge is going to be decreasing. We're able to keep sense of what's going on in oxidation and reduction reactions by this cute little sentence, Leo the lion says grr. Leo is in all capitals because the L, the E, and the O stand for something. The L stand for loses. The E stands for electrons. And the O stands for oxidation. So right there in Leo, you have the definition. In an oxidation reaction, your atom is going to lose electrons. The GER G stands for gain or gains. The E again stands for electrons. And the R stands for reduction. So in a reduction reaction, the atoms are going to gain electrons. There is another way to help you remember it, and that's oil rig. Some kids prefer oil rig over Leo, Leo the lion says grr, and that's fine. They mean the same things. Oxidation is losing. Reduction is gaining. So with the, whichever situation you want to remember, either Leo the lion says grr or oil rig, that's totally fine. They mean the same thing. They are meant to help you remember what's going on in reduction oxidation reactions. Again, last lesson, we learned the rules for assigning oxidation numbers and what they are, and we went through some examples, and then you had a chance to practice some in your homework. So now we're going to come back together and see how the changing of these oxidation numbers allow us to say whether oxidation or reduction will occur. Here's how we do it, and this is meant to be like a step-by-step -step situation. The only way we're able to tell 
whether we have reduction or oxidation is to first assign the oxidation numbers. Once we've assigned oxidation numbers to every single atom in our reaction, we're then going to link up the elements whose oxidation numbers change, just in the same way that we would link up the bronsted lowry acid-base conjugate pairs. And there should be a total of two links. One is going to represent reduction, the other is going to represent oxidation. If you have more than two links, if more than two things are changing their oxidation numbers, you've done something wrong. Go back and re-look at your rules on how you assigned oxidation numbers. All right, once you've got your link, now look at the oxidation numbers. The one that's decreasing its value is being reduced. Right? We said reduced. Gr. Gr means it's gaining electrons. Electrons are negative. So if I'm getting more of a negative charge, my value will decrease. Conversely, oxidized must be the other one. Oxidized is Leo, right? Losing or loses electrons. Electrons are negative. If I'm getting rid of something that's negative, I'm becoming more positive. Becoming more positive is increasing its value. So we've got these vocab words, what's being reduced, what's being oxidized. We are now going to add two more vocabulary words. The substance being reduced is called the oxidizing agent. The substance being reduced is called the oxidizing agent. Right? Oxidizing is the one that's going to lose electrons. Well, they can't lose the electrons unless there's someone or something that wants to gain them. So whatever's being reduced, which is GER, gaining, that's going to be the one that's initiating the oxidizing agent and vice versa. The substance being oxidized whoops, oxidized is called the reducing agent. So let's try to put this all together so that we can identify what's being oxidized, what's being reduced, what's the oxidizing agent, and what's the reducing agent. All right. So we've got this first chemical reaction. Solid iron reacts with oxygen gas to produce iron 3 oxide. It is not balanced, and that's okay for the purpose of what we're trying to do today. What we would have called this up until this unit is, oh, it's a synthesis reaction. Oh, it's a combustion reaction. Aha, it is actually a redox reaction. How do I know that? Well, can't really tell by knowing, by looking at it. Perhaps you realize we're in a redox reactions unit, so you would figure it out that way. But ultimately, the only way to know is to assign those oxidation numbers. So let's think back to our rules. The oxidation number of iron is going to be zero because it's an element. The oxidation number of oxygen is going to be zero because it's an element. Yes, it's diatomic. Its number is still zero. When I now look here, we've got Fe2O3. Iron doesn't have any rules. Oxygen does. I know that all together, these oxidation numbers have to add up to be zero. 
Well, oxygen's rules are that these numbers are always going to be negative 2 to give us negative 6. There's no rule for the irons, so I don't know what they are, but I know that together they're going to have to give us a positive 6. So what number must go above each of the iron atoms? You got it, positive 3. So cleaning this up a little, iron's oxidation number is positive 3, oxygen's is negative 2. I'm now going to look to see whose oxidation numbers have changed. Iron's started out 0, ended up positive 3, I'm going to link it up. Oxygen's number started out as 0, ended up negative 2, I'm going to link it up. Now I need to think about Leo the lion. All right, Leo says grr, or maybe you like oil rig, it doesn't matter. Losing electrons is oxidation, gaining electrons is reduction. My go-to is the grr. I like to figure out what's going on first because I remember that gaining electrons, electrons are negative. So if I get more negative, this is the one whose number decreases. It gets more negative. So when I look, going from 0 to positive 3 or 0 to negative 2, maybe I even need a number line. Here's my 0 going from 0 to positive 3 on one of them, 0 to negative 2 on one of them, excuse me. This change from 0 to negative 2, that's the one that's getting more negative or decreasing. In other words, this is the one that's being reduced. The other link, the iron, that must be the one that's oxidized. And as you look at it, its number is getting more positive. Right? It's losing its electrons, Leo. Oxygen is getting more negative, it's gaining electrons, reduced. How do I now add those two vocabulary words? oxidizing agent and reducing agent? Well, the one that's oxidized is the reducing agent. And the one that's reduced, which is the oxygen, that's the oxidizing agent. Let's try one more. Reaction two. Iron three oxide reacts with three moles of carbon dioxide to produce two moles of iron and three moles of carbon dioxide. Oh, kind of sort of doesn't really fit into any of the five traditional categories that we learned about earlier this year. And this is why more advanced study of chemistry, we don't think of those original five that we taught you, but rather we think now in terms of acid-base reactions, precipitate reactions, or redox reactions. How do I know that it's redox though? Again, the only way to know is to assign oxidation numbers. Fe2O3, just did that one. Iron's gonna wind up being plus three. Oxygen will wind up being minus two. All right, carbon. It's two. So sorry, carbon monoxide. There's no rule for carbon, but there is for oxygen. Oxygen's always negative two unless it's in a peroxide or with fluorine. The compound has to be electrically neutral, so carbons needs to be a plus two. Iron is an element, so its oxidation number will be zero. 
carbon dioxide, let's write it out, COO, each of the oxygens will be negative 2. So carbon's oxidation number needs to be positive 4 this time. We've got positive 4 and negative 2. Now we look to see whose oxidation number is changing. Iron starts out positive 3, ends up 0. That's changing. Link it up. Oxygen starts out negative 2 in both of the reactants, and it ends up negative 2. Oxygen's number is not changing. Carbon on the reactant side has a plus 2. On the product side, it's plus 4. That number has changed. Link it up. And again, oxygen, we said its number hasn't changed. So good. We've got two links because that's all you can have. One will be oxidized, one will be reduced. I prefer to start with the reduced because the number gets smaller. Right? That's what reduced means. So when I look, iron starts out plus 3 and goes to 0. That's getting smaller. So I found my reduction. Here's the reduction reaction. And once I find reduction, I know the other one has to be, excuse me, oxidation. But for those of you who want a justification, oxidation, Leo the lion says, Ger, Leo, losing electrons, oxidation. When I'm losing electrons or negative, I become more positive. Positive 2 to positive 4, that becomes more positive. Now that I've found the reduction, I know that that's the oxidizing agent. And I've found the oxidation reaction, so I know that that's the reducing agent. And you'll notice that those vocabulary words are only affiliated with the reactants. So how is it that I can show what's being oxidized and what's being reduced? Because right now, they're being shown in their simultaneous fashions. Remember how we said that you can't have reduction without oxidation and vice versa? They're showing it to you in that fashion in these chemical reactions. But if I actually wanted to see, well, what does the reduction reaction look like? What does the oxidation reaction look like? I am going to have to write what are referred to as half reactions. Half reactions means if you put both of them together, you'll get a whole. Right? So all redox reactions can be thought of as happening in two halves. One produces electrons, that will be the oxidation half, and the other requires electrons, that'll be the reduction half. And again, you can't have one without the other. So how do we write half reactions? Well, let's start with the first example that we had done together. Try to go through this on the quick side. Right, we had our two elements, both of which had oxidation numbers of zero. Then we had Fe2O3. The iron changed, the oxygen changed. We said that the oxygen was the one being reduced, and we said that the iron was the one being oxidized. So to write the half reactions, I'm going to write what's on both sides of the links. So let's start with the oxidation half reaction. Oxidation half reaction. The first thing that I have on the link is the iron solid. What it's linked up with on the product side is this compound, Fe2O3. The compound, though, is ionic. You know that if we were to put it in solution, it would break up, right? So what it's really changing to is the Fe3 plus ion. How did it get there? It was oxidized. Oxidized means Leo, losing electrons. Think about enthalpy. If I wanted to lose heat, 
Would I write it on the reactant or the product side? You're right. I would put it on the product side. How many electrons did the iron lose? That is answered based upon its change in oxidation numbers. We started out with zero for the oxidation number, and it changed to positive three. So how many electrons did it lose? Three. Again, to summarize, this is the oxidation half reaction. This is me showing Leo, the loss of electrons. Losing electrons, it shows up on the product side. And the coefficient comes from the change in oxidation numbers. Now let's do the reduction half reaction. Here's where I found reduction. What I linked up was oxygen gas and it's going to the oxygen in the ionic compound, so that will be oxygen, the anion, as 2 minus. Reduction, or GER, shows the gaining of electrons. When you think of enthalpy or heat, if I wanted to show that the reaction was endothermic, which is the gaining or absorption of heat energy, I would write it in on the reactant side. So I'm definitely going to be putting in some amount of electrons, right? Reactant side. And just like the oxidation, the coefficient comes from the change in oxidation numbers. So oxygen's oxidation number went from 0 to negative 2. It changed by 2, so I put a coefficient of 2 in front of the electron. Oxygen, the element, gained 2 electrons to become oxide. Now in terms of balancing, you'll see that there's two oxygens, so I'll need a coefficient of 2 in front of that, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Sorry. Get excited. At this stage in the game, speaking of balancing, you'll notice that the electrons lost in this reaction and the electrons gained in this reaction don't equal each other. In real life, they do. When we start to put this all back together, we have to have the electrons lost and equaling the electrons gained. That's not where we're at yet. We're just practicing recognizing what's being oxidized and reduced, and how do we write the oxidation and reduction half reactions. Because again, the overall shows them happening simultaneously, but these half reactions are showing them as happening individually. Oxidation shows electrons lost on the product side. Reduction will show electrons gained on the reactant side. And how many are lost or gained comes specifically from the change in the oxidation numbers that you wrote down. All right, let's try one more. So in our next reaction, SO3 minus, well again, I know the oxygen is going to be negative 2. That will contribute to a negative 6. Sulfur is going to need to be positive 5 because I want them all to sum up to be this negative 1. Hydrogen, the ion, tells me, isn't that so convenient? 
plus one. Ah, permanganate. All right, oxygen will be a negative two. There are four of them though, so that's going to be a whole contribution of negative eight. I need the manganese to try to cancel it out, but I don't want to cancel it out entirely. It has to sum up to negative one. So that means the manganese is going to be positive seven. There's only one, so that'll be positive seven. Sulfate ion. Again, oxygen will be negative two. Together, those four contribute to a negative eight. I need the overall to contribute to a positive two. So I need sulfur's contribution to be a positive six. Water. Oxygen will be negative two. Hydrogen will be positive one. Again, there are two of them, right? So that'll give me positive two, which will cancel out the negative two, making it electrically neutral. And manganese, the ion, its oxidation number will be the same as the charge. Some of you may be wondering, why are there so many ions in this reaction? It's written as a net ionic equation. All right, so now that all of my atoms have oxidation numbers, I'm going to holistically go back and look and see what's changing. So sulfur starts out as plus 5, changes to plus 6, so I will link it up. Oxygen starts out minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2 on the ends. Okay, that's not changing. Hydrogen is plus 1 on the reactant side, plus 1 on the product side, not changing. Manganese is plus 7 on the reactant side, plus 2 on the product side. That has changed, so I will link it up. And oxygen, again, we said that that was not changing. All right, so now my go-to is I like to do the one that's reduced because reduced means getting smaller. So when I look at what I've linked up, sulfur is plus 5 going to plus six. That number is not getting smaller. Manganese plus seven to start. Ending up plus two, that is getting smaller. So I like to find my reduction reaction first. Once you find your reduction, you know the other one. Pardon me. Oxidation. <laughs> Oh, it's been a long day. Please excuse me. The oxidation reaction. Now I'm going to write them as half reactions. What you do first or second doesn't matter. The half reaction that is oxidation. All right. We've got this SO3 with a negative 1. Why didn't you break that up? Ah, I didn't break that up because it's already an ion. You can't break an ion up anymore. We broke up the iron two, uh, three oxide into ions, but you can't break an ion up anymore. It already is. So you've got that SO3 minus, and then we have our arrow, and it's changing to SO4 two minus. SO4 two minus. And you'll notice I'm not writing the oxidation numbers in my half reaction. Oxidation is Leo the lion, Leo, losing electrons, so that's going to be losing on the product side. How many electrons were lost? Started out as positive 5, ended up as positive 6, that's a difference of 1. So I could write the number 1 in there, or I could just leave it as plus E, and that's fine. Okay, the half reaction that is reduction. Here's my reduction. Oops. First thing I've linked up is this ion MnO4 minus. That is going to what I've linked up at the other end, Mn2 plus. Reduction is GR gaining electrons. I show the gaining of electrons on the reactant side. How many were gained comes from the change in oxidation number. 
plus 7, changing to plus 2, that's a difference of 5. So 5 electrons needed to be gained. Now, Mrs. Kurzman, my atoms aren't balanced. You're right. That would be a skill we would learn if we moved on in terms of our unit. However, we are not going to have time this year to learn how to balance redox reactions. So here is where our learning is going to stop. It's giving you a solid foundation for moving on to higher levels of chemistry study. And any teacher in the high school that knows you're studying you know, more advanced levels knows exactly how much you've covered and they will teach you as if you've seen it for the very first time what to do when it comes your way. So at this point in time, stop the lecture, open up the homework, and now you have a chance to not only identify your reduction oxidation reactions, but also to write your half reactions. For those of you who are curious and are saying to yourself, these half reactions kind of look familiar to me. I'm glad because when we studied single replacement reactions and we used that standard reduction potential chart, you were reading and interpreting half reactions. You just didn't know it at the time. So had we been together and been able to study the unit in its entirety, we would have revisited that standard reduction potential chart. You would have had a better understanding as to why all of those reactions are listed in the order in which they are and how come some of them need to be flipped. Remember we had to make that backwards Z in order for the single replacement reaction to work? Well that's because we needed to have one species be oxidized and the other species be reduced. So thank you for a great lesson. I know you'll be very successful and I look forward to 